So we had this big living room and my desk was at one end, his desk was at the other end. And in the middle, he's got the Spider-Man comics open and he's developing the movement for the original Spider-Man oh. movies in the living room there. I tell people I'm a perpetual day player. Like I've been a day player my whole career where I go in for a day or two, I die or maybe survive and move on to the next job. I looked you up and I was like, huh, like you, you're like literally the second speaking MCU character technically. So I was like, be awesome to talk to you. You know, it's funny because I was conscious of that. Like not when we were shooting, but yeah. when the whole thing came out, like I don't even remember if when we were shooting, if I knew it was scene one. Really? And I don't know. I never got a script. I, I got sides on set, but I had to, I had to ask for them because it, you know, Marvel, I guess from the get go, has been very um they they like to keep their scripts locked down and even so. <laughs> even um the like the sides that you get on set and the call sheets mm -hmm. i was on agents of shield and they numbered all of the sides and call sheets mm -hmm. that everybody got during the day and they expected them back at the wow. end of the day <laughs> never been on another show in 24 years that did that there wow. yeah they, they keep everything pretty locked down they there was one time when we were on uh on set i was in my trailer and they said something about oh you are you you ready for scene blah blah whatever the scene number was mm -hmm. and i was like i didn't know i was in that scene <laughs> and they're like yeah, yeah yeah it was the one when when Robert's getting into the Humvee and he says something, I can't remember which version they used. They shot two versions of the line where he goes, um, I'm sorry, uh, you're in that Humvee. This is the, the fun oh, V, right? This is the fun V. That's yeah. the ho Humvee. There was one version. It was a ho Humvee and the humdrum V. Okay. So I, okay. I can't even remember which one they used in the movie, That's but great. That, it was that scene. I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't know I was in this scene. I'm sorry. This is the fun V. The humdrum V is back there. Yeah, because I was going to ask, like, did you know what you were going to be like? Did you audition? Like, what was the yeah, process? Yeah, so, so I'm also a stunt performer. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the acting jobs I get are through stunts because they need one person to do both. There's, like, if you're in one scene and you can find someone that can act, there's no need to hire a stunt double and sure. save some money. So <clears throat> um, I actually, my friend Michael Huggins called me up. Michael is one of the big stunt riggers in the Marvel universe. He okay. does. Yeah, he's been in Atlanta for, for a while work, well, just because that's where they're shooting all these things. So um, he he does a lot of the stunt rigging. So um, he called me up one day and he said, hey, Tom Harper, who was the stunt coordinator on Iron Man, Call me up and he goes, hey, um, I heard Tom Harper's looking for suit performers. I do a, a lot of creature suit work as well. So I called Tom. I had worked with him before. And I said, hey, uh, Huggins says you're looking for suit guys. He goes, oh, yeah, I was, but I got Oakley and Mike Justice in mm -hmm. the parts already. So um, so they were in the the two guys in the Iron Man suit, uh, Mark 1 and Mark 2, in the uh -huh. first movie. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and they're a little bigger than me too. So I wouldn't even have been good for it. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're both inch and a half, two inches taller. And so that was that. And then I got a call from Tom's assistant. He was putting together just ND stunt team, like, you know, to play soldiers and stuff. Sure. So I went in for a fitting. Oh, I had auditioned. Yeah. Yeah. So I had auditioned. He called me up a week or two later, sent me in for an audition. That happens a lot of the time with when it's the stunt acting roles, they go to the stunt coordinator and say, put together a list and send it to, you know, and they send those people into casting. Okay. And so I auditioned, didn't think anything of it. And then I got a call to go to a fitting and I was like, Oh, I guess I got it. So I went to my fitting down in Playa del Rey where the studio was, uh, they did the interiors. Okay. And as I'm leaving the studio, I get a call from casting offering me the part. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I just had a fitting. They're like, what are you talking about? You just had a fitting. So what I figured out was I went in for a fitting just for random ND stunt. ND is nondescript. Nondescript stunt guy. The part had not been cast yet. So I go, yeah, I'm I'm here at the studio right now. Yeah. Oh, so, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it played out kind of weird. But so, yeah, that was it. And uh, yeah, so it was, I had, I, I don't think I knew it was scene one. Mm -hmm. And then when the trailer came out, oh, you know, I was at Disneyland with my family and Tom calls me up right after the Comic-Con uh, when they 
premiered the trailer. Oh, so wow. he called me up. He goes, congrats, you're the star of the trailer. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. He's like, your scene made the trailer. I was like, oh my God, that's great. Is it cool if I take a picture with you? Yes, it's very cool. I don't want to see this on your MySpace page. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up, I'm kidding. And then it was seen, so I was conscious. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, you know, especially when MCU got really big. I was like, right. oh my God, I have the second line. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did nobody's you... ever brought that up before until you. Yeah. I was like, did you did you ever like come up with any kind of like fun backstory, like who your character could have been or something like that? Or just. No, I didn't really. I, you know, when other people probably have. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, I uh, I was really just kind of, I mean, I saw the sides for the audition. Mm-hmm. And I go, oh, I get this. I know some you really have to work on. I was like, no, I get this. I right. know what's going on here. And <clears throat> John Favreau came up to me on set. I don't know what we were talking about, but he goes, he said something about um, we make them like you, then we kill you equals good movie. <laughs> and it was like, but I kind of felt that from right. the side too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's like it's like after your character's death is really when it starts to hit him. You know, Tony starts kind of freaking out. It seems so. I was like, it, yeah. it definitely nailed that for sure. And well, after I die, he's alone. Right. Right. He's like yeah. got nothing. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, why right. he's saying like the other two get killed. Um, is it Garrett? Yeah, Garrett Knoll mm-hmm. and Eileen Weisinger in the front seats. Yeah. And. Once they get killed, that's why I'm like, start getting out of the Humvee. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa where are you going? Stay right. Here. <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah. Three yeah. Quick deaths. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty cool though. Cause I was like, I was going through your IMDb and I was like, dang, you've done like stunts on a lot of other Marvel stuff too. Like even like X-Men first class I saw was on there and WandaVision. Yeah. I tell people I'm a perpetual day player. Like I've been a day player my whole career where I go in for a day or two, I die or maybe survive and, and move on to the next job. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm always so impressed with the stunt the stunt crews. I mean, like I saw like John Wick four, and I'm like, all this mm. like stunt guys on that. I'm like, this is insane. I don't even know how they do this. <laughs> it was funny was I just worked on um, Five Nights at Freddy's, and one of the uh, the stunt riggers was he did. Um, I don't know if it, I don't want to <laughs> put myself out there and say he did all of it, but he did a oh. lot of Keanu's driving in that. Oh movie. wow, okay, yeah, so. Me and my buddy who plays Bonnie in Mm -hmm. Five Nights at Freddy's, we're all psyched to go to the movie theater, support a friend. And we get up and we go, yeah, two tickets for John with four. She's like, that's not out yet. (laughs) I was like, what? We were like like two days early. So I still haven't seen it. Oh, really? Oh, my God. That's (laughs) good. It's just an awesome action movie. Uh, yeah, because I cool. that was the other thing I saw on IMDb that you're gonna be uh, Freddy. Uh, yeah, and then, but that's awesome. Like I'm sure you can't talk a lot about that if it's you know not I, out yet. But. I could talk about it, but I can't say anything specific about scenes or story or sure. Really tell you anything that happens. Yeah. Did you did <laughs> you play the game? With, uh, only after I got the job. Okay. Okay. So gotcha. my I was aware I I had heard of it. I have an eight year old son and uh, a seven-year-old daughter and I had heard of it. And as soon as my friend Andy, who's a stunt coordinator on that, mm-hmm. and again, on that, we came in through stunts. He told me that he's like, yeah, I got this movie, Five Nights at Freddy's, Creature Work. I'm like, hey, Braden, you, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's? He's like, yeah, I know that game. He hadn't played it yet though. So we started playing the game after I got the job. Okay. I'm stuck okay. on night five. I haven't beat night five yet. Gotcha. I've never played it, but I, I know it's pretty popular among like YouTubers who play the, the horror games and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, and those guys, four of the YouTubers came and hung out on the set for a week. Oh, that's awesome. So we got Mark- to know them a little bit. Markiplier, was interview. he there? Markiplier, I had heard rumors that he was going to be in the movie, but I don't know. No, it was Baz, huh. Raz, Daco, and 8-Bit Ryan. All super cool guys. And they were just stoked to be there. They were stoked to meet us. Oh, and awesome. they actually, when when they met us, it was kind of like an event on set where uh-huh. we were in the costumes and oh. they actually didn't know that there were people inside the costume. Oh, that's awesome. Cause we were perfectly still. And when we'd move, we would do these subtle moves, like, right. Like a robot, you know, like uh-huh. animatronic. And, and I'm, I'm not sure at what point they actually realized there was people because we were fully in character as oh, animatronics. That's so great. 
That's pretty cool. So like you've done stunts for, you said 24 years. Like, did you, was that always your aspiration or did you like aspire to be like a more of an actor? Did you, how did that, you get into that? It, by the time I got out of college, it was both at the same time. It was consciously pursuing both. Um, freshman year of college, I went to University of Illinois. Okay. Uh, my roommate and I decided to abandon our, our current path, uh, course of studies because we didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, we're like, let's be stuntmen. And um, we auditioned for the Indiana Jones show at Disney World. Okay. Um, on October 23rd of 1993. We didn't mm -hmm. get the job. They weren't hiring anybody at the time. Um, so I decided to stay in school. Mm -hmm. And and I probably in the next semester, I took my first acting class. And I, and I took another one. And I was like, well junior year I was like, there's nothing else i like doing as much as this so right. i need to decide am i going to go for it or am i not so if that's when i decided i'm being an actor and by that point i had had three surgeries because i was a gymnast and my knee where i had two on my knee one on my wrist i'm like oh, i'm never going to be a stuntman come to find out now that i am a stuntman that's common that's like <laughs> yeah we all have surgeries because we're all athletes right um, so my body healed up. And by the time I got out of college, I was like, oh, I can actually pursue both of these at the same time. And I thought, well, one's going to help the other and vice versa. And they have. I mean, most of my acting resume is from stunts. So has there ever been any kind of role that you're like, I would love to be on this show, love to be on that movie, that franchise? I would have loved to do anything on Friends. That okay. would have been great. Um, I would have like Star Wars. The Star Wars universe was always like that's the one I want to get in this. I don't care what you want me to do. I'll right. fall downstairs naked. You know what? That, <laughs> that you have to do that in, in Star Wars. But I finally got a chance to do it last year. And oh, the show's awesome. coming out this year. So, oh, that's awesome. And and that was another one. I just went in as a random ND stunt guy. But mm -hmm. the, the stunt community in general kind of knows me as one of the people who can really act as well. Because okay. I'm trained. I've done theater. A lot of experience. All that stuff. And there's there's a handful of people that you go, oh, I got to send actors in. OK, mm -hmm. I know these people. So we were on set and the assistant director came up to the stunt coordinator, Colin. You know, he's one of the stunt coordinators, Colin Fallenweider. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, uh, can we give one of your guys a line? And he immediately, without skipping a beat, he goes, Foster, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I popped up. I was right there. I popped up and they're like, here's your line. Um, I'm like, OK, great. And it 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 fits kind of cool with I. I did something funny and kind of, I have a good bit in this okay. battle scene. And oh, so, right. uh, so to see me do the line before that kind of has a little tiny arc, which is always mm -hmm. fun to have. It's like, Oh, it's like that guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it was fun. It was fun to get to want to do anything on a star Wars show. Mm -hmm. But then my goal after that was I want at least one line. And that's exactly right. what I got. One line. Oh, that's cool. I will keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, yeah. I know there's several shows coming out this year, so I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite role that you've you've done or favorite stunt you've done? Mm. I got to say my favorite stunt is <clears throat> the high fall off the Paris rooftops as Mr. Hyde in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> Wow. So was that a yeah. uh, creature work then? Did you have like, yeah. Oh yeah. Major creature work. That yeah. was three hours at the fastest three hours of makeup and then mm -hmm. another hour and 15 to get into the suit, the body and oh have them blend gosh. everything. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, and everybody, I can go into any creature shop in LA now uh -huh. and go Mr. Hyde and they go, Oh yeah, I know that suit. Like uh -huh. it was, yeah, it was really good. And there was some really, um, the woman who who applied the makeup uh, mostly on the actor Jason Fleming, but then also on me sometimes, uh, Margaret Prentice. She's famous in the the creature effects and and special effects makeup world, and she okay. did that. So it's it's pretty well known as a very complicated heavy suit, and it yeah, yeah it's exactly what it was. <laughs> wow. But yeah, so that was that was really fun. That was probably the biggest thing I'd done, but not because it was a high fall. But it was backwards. It was sliding off the roof. It was in a forty-pound costume. <laughs> it was yeah. That one, I was a little nervous for that one. But right. everything was set up good, so I was I was happy with it. Mm -hmm. I was like a, another iconic one that people tend to remember is in old school mm -hmm. when Will Ferrell they're at they're on the basketball court doing their little dance number. Yeah, 
and Will Ferrell puts on the mascot costume and tumbles across the basketball court. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, and then he jumps through the hoop of fire. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't do the fire. That was his normal double Joe Vaccaro, but Joe's not a gymnast. So they put me in the suit to do the tumbling. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. As far as, I mean, God, the, the Iron Man, the Iron Man one, as far as, as roles I played, that's at the top and also dragged me to hell because that mm-hmm. was a very, that was a mix of everything. That was creature work. That was stunts. That was acting. And I loved that movie is kind of my example for when like nowadays a lot of producers and studios, they are concerned with money over um, ethics. Right. And you kind of pretty normal now to have to fight for the money that you're owed. And it's just, it's, it's gotten crazy, but that's my example of a movie where it wasn't like that, where they did everything right. They did everything morally and ethically and it was it was hard long hours. I mean, it was regularly sixteen hour days. Wow. Um, but because Sam Raimi and um, Kristen Karstrubi and uh, 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 Grant Curtis, they they were the folks in charge. They were all so cool that it just made it bearable. It made it you know it made it fun to be there. It made it um, it it made me want to put everything. I can into pleasing Sam <laughs> really is what it was like play the part, but please Sam, make, make sure Sam's happy and you've done your job, you know? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, I grew up on the, the Spider-Man, the Toby Spider-Man movies. I, I loved Sam Ruby. So I haven't seen drive me to hell though. I, I haven't seen oh. that. One, so I'll have to that was it. kind of, it was kind of known as his return to horror after mm-hmm. Spider-Man. Well, the funny thing about Spider-Man is, so I've mentioned Michael Huggins, the stunt rigger who does a lot of the Marvel movies, right? Chris Daniels, is another good friend of ours that um, he was my roommate for a while. Actually, he I was actually living with him when mm-hmm. he got the job as the main Spider-Man stunt double on the Sam Raimi movies. Oh wow! So he was like in the living room. He's so we had this big living room, and my desk was at one end, his desk was at the other end, and in the middle, he's got the Spider-Man comics open, and he's developing the movement for the original Spider-Man. Oh, wow, that's cool. movies in the living room there, and right. then he brought that and. And he was like the main guy because he, he has a he had a dance background, stunt background, did some mm-hmm. acting. So he just knocked it out of the park and he became the guy for three movies. Oh, that's and awesome. And now he's one of the main he's like one of the biggest stunt riggers in Atlanta, too. Yeah. So he's now it's like it came so full circle because he's the head rigger on the Spider-Man movies. Hello, Peter. It was great talking to you. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to. to yeah, talk no problem. It's great, great talking to you too. Is there anything else uh, you you wanted to you can mention? I'm just uh, getting stoked for uh, Five Nights at Freddy's to come out. There's going to be a lot of. They're really putting a, a lot of resources into it. I'm going to be going to conventions and um, signing stuff, and oh, it, awesome. it's it's going to be a ball. Well, thank you again, Kevin, for uh, for talking to me today. It was great to meet yeah. you. No problem. Great meeting you.